Okay, good evening and welcome to the regular meeting of the Orange Board of Finance. Today is Monday, June 21st. We'll call the meeting to order at 7-11 and start by having everyone introduce themselves beginning on my right. It's 7-12. 7-12, okay. Just kidding. PJ Shanley. <laughs> it is 7-12. John Safarelli, Finance Director. Yes, Attorney. Uh, Joe Nuzzo. Jim Leahy. And Kevin Houlihan. Thank you. Item number three, public dialogue, since there's no one here. John, I don't know, do you still have an open email if people were sending questions? Uh, I received nothing. Okay, great. Item number four, Amity update. Mr. Nuzzo. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> All right, so last Amity meeting, well, I did not attend in person, uh, but I do have all of the uh, backup information. Uh, big item of note is that the surplus is a million six. Uh, when added to the 507 in the transfer account, uh, we're $2.1 million plus uh, year to date on the surplus. And that's through April. Uh, so a couple more months to go. Let's see how we do on the, on the surplus uh, funds. Uh, and primary driver there was the medical account, which was over a million dollars, favorable. Is over a million, million seventy four <clears throat> at seventy seven percent uh, claims as a percentage of uh, as a percentage of the claim. So seventy seven down from eighty four last year, and down from ninety two the prior eighteen nineteen. So again, I think we uh, overshot that expense as is usually the case. Uh, so we are at two million two point one million plus um, at this stage of the game. I'm not sure what else is coming, but we always know that. The last couple of months of the year, the surpluses continued to rise. Uh, that was a big item of no, I know we always discuss that. A um, couple of other things. Uh, the tuition rate for 21-22 is going to be set at 19,170 for non-resident students, uh, which represents a just over 3% increase uh, above the current tuition rate of 18,596. Uh, and in the current year, there were six non-resident students enrolled, including the child of a staff member. Uh, two students graduated in June of this year with the current class. Uh, the 21-22 budget includes revenue from three tuition students. And the, and the non-resident tuition rate is calculated using the, st the State Department of Education net current expenditure per pupil formula indexed for 21-22. Uh, and then uh, the superintendent proposed uh, the following rate for non-resident tuition students identified as special needs, special education, at 19623 Again, same uh, derived from the state formula. Uh, and then some additional services required by a student's plan will be added to the base tuition rate. Uh, additional services include assistive technology, hearing, direct services, speech and language, occupational and physical therapy, clinical evaluation, special equipment, behavioral therapy, independent consultations, uh, extended school year program, outplacement, special transportation, and any, any other specific needs contracted for the student will be added to that number. Uh, and then they gave us a list of the hourly rate uh, down below for the various additional services required. Uh, although there was no mention of, let's see here, no mention of how many special ed students are in that program. Yeah, they didn't mention how many students are in that program. Non-resident students in that program. Um, uh, anything else, Jim, you wanted to talk a little bit about? More related to the surplus, do you see anything else you want to... Yeah, well, um, why don't we just review the email I sent out, and, and then we can go to the, the associated documents that either of us could chime in, and let's assume this to be an educational thing for for everybody who's watching. Um, this is the one you sent out on the 11th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was sent out at uh, on June 11th at uh, 3:47. It was actually 12.47 in Pacific time. Um, 
What's striking to me is the consistency. You, here's what I mean by consistency, and as you can see by the, the, the paragraph that I just quoted from the, um, the Word document, Joe, that I, I see you have there. In one month, <clears throat> over 900,000 in surplus was discovered. It's the month that happened after the budget for the next year was voted on. And I think we've already heard from some people in um, the community regarding uh, our positions and my position for sure on um, the continuation of the poorly managed budget process and amounts that place a significant burden on the taxpayer. And so if you can read right up there in the red, uh, the unspent fund balance for the fiscal year, they say, is uh, 1650000 But this is up from 732000 So if you're running a business, and a lot of people in our town do run businesses associated with businesses and organizations, this is consistently happening at this time of year, as you alluded to, Joe. It's been happening for many years. In addition, in that statement, there is the potential for um, regional school systems to uh, put into a capital non-recurring reserve 1% of their budget, which in our, this case is 507944 <clears throat> And it feels like there's almost a, a sense that oh, if we don't spend all the money, then we can just throw it into this reserve account. At least the, the current leadership seems to be on that bend. Um, and they say they want to spend some of the end-of-year purchases on certain items. These were items, as I'd like to refresh everybody on our team's memory, that were taken out of the budget to get the budget down to a, a level that people voted on for next year. And now they were, they are um, saying, oh, but we'll just spend the money out of this current budget. The documentation we have provided the community regarding the systemic issues with the Amity over budgeting and the impact on the increase in taxes that results from that is longstanding. Uh, articles have been written and we've discussed it before. But here we are seeing it again. I just wanted to mention that. Of particular note is that in our current town budget, we budgeted to have 875000 in return funds from Amity. That would mean that Amity would need to, since we have about 50%, we just doubled that, that we, they would need to have a surplus, untouched surplus, surplus money that goes back to the, t the towns that fund the, that organization, 1750 Now, it is true, Joe, that if you put together the current surplus, $1,650,000, and the 507, their current surplus is $2.1 million, $2.157, as we can see on the screen there. But were that money not to be at these levels, and there was a continuation of the spending that we have seen then our budget would be in jeopardy to whatever amount would be less than 875000 The decreases specifically, Joe, I see you had the file there, good job by you on that, is, is in salaries, benefits, and purchase services. You can see it in the middle of the page. Significant numbers. And what's driving the benefits down below, as we typically have seen in the past, has been this rapid increase in what we've learned over the years, mental, uh, medical and dental insurance, and that took a hit of 350000 Don't be surprised to see that number in that go up the next month. Whoops. Um, but what happens at the end of June, as I'm sure you remember, Joe, is that they then spend money, take money out of account, shift money around, and you never get to see at the end of the year the proper how much they were over budgeting in that in that amount. Uh, I have a concern that when 
and I don't know what's going to happen when you know we get back to normal and we seem to be getting there rapidly with less and less places requiring masks, for example. You know, what will happen to this monthly actual versus budget that they have for expenses at Amity? Are we going to see more and more people in uh, going out for services? Is inflation going to start hit, hitting it? So uh, I don't know what's happening, but as you can see in the, in the column that I've highlighted in yellow that I sent to you, it's not a small percentage every month. 173,000 to do good in the last month alone out of a budget of 409. That's well up in the 40% range, right? So um, these are very concerning <coughs> things, how the budgeting is done at Amity and how we have been tracking it, and we just need to continue to educate our people in our community regarding this matter. Um, that's all I have, Joe. Is that dovetail with what yes. you've seen? Yes, it does. And what you feel uh, from the Amity side? I think that surplus is on its way up for another. It, EJ, is yeah. Amity aware of the 875000 that we have put in the budget? I don't think so, Pete. No. Um, Dr. Byers. We, we, hi we highlighted it at the annual budget hearing where Dr. Byers was there. Remember but, that chart? Of course. But my point is, as we get closer to their fiscal year end, our fiscal year end too. We probably just want to revisit this conversation so that they know that that's what we've budgeted and that's what the expectation is. And this way, we don't have a shortfall if they decide to spend money on other projects. That this money's already been accounted for in our budget. The five hundred seventy uh, five hundred seven thousand. First of all, Joe has hinted to, and I do believe that the surplus will go up in the mm. last month just like it's gone up in, in this month. Right. Okay. Uh, the high 507,000 is not voted on by the Amity uh, Board of Education until August. It's, in my mind, I've been saying for years it should be September because in August, you know. No one's around. Uh, I think that's a vacation month. Um, and yeah, they so have it moved there now, but it's not official. It's not official at this point. Um, one of the troubles I have is I don't think I see, particularly when you when that budget chart where you see it's 1.5 million on average for the last what was it dozen years or surplus, but in the last four years it was 2.6 or something like that per year. I don't see a sense that there's a problem here, Houston, from the perspective of the members and the administration of the To me, it's a, it's a it's an astronomical problem, and it's even worse if it is not thought that it is. A problem. And you can go back to the days when I was in your role, Joe. Okay. And you had a surplus of 500000 You have a budget of, you know, $35 million at that point in time, $38 million, $40 million. And you say, okay, you know, you want to have a little left. But now we're at these levels. And, and I, 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 I hope that better ways and cooler heads will, will come to a common understanding that this is a problem, and then how do you address it? rather than some of the ways it was addressed uh, over the last couple of years. Because um, this comes down to taxes. And, you know, you, you meet people on the street and everybody wants this, everybody wants this, but the one thing everyone wants is lower our taxes. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's, 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 it's puzzling and frustrating in a certain point. So that would be my follow-up to you, Joe. And, Mr. Chairman, that would be the end of whatever other That includes your vice chairman's report. All right. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. All right. Item number six, discuss and approve funding for High Plains Community Center steam tunnel pipe replacement request for 200000 We have a memo from uh, Mr. Britton, the director of public works. Okay, this is a 
to add to his memo. This is a project he's been working on for a couple of years down there. Uh, he first started with final reno renovation of the wing, I guess the west wing, east wing, whatever it is down there, and some work in the pool area. Then I've only been in the tunnel once in my life, and I think that'll last me a lifetime <laughs> <laughs> down there. The, the coverings were asbestos. We took a stake ramp. Uh, the first selectman was able to put that out to bid. We got rid of the asbestos that insulated the pipes. After we took the asbestos off, the pipes are as old as the school down there. A lot of them are leaking. A lot of the valves are leaking, so then for a safety issue, we decided we needed to get these pipes repaired. In the meantime, Mr. Brenton also went out and got a grant from uh, United Illuminating Southern Connecticut Gas to re-insulate the pipes. So it made no sense to re-insulate the pipes until we replaced the pipes. So this was replace the pipes, and then United Illuminating will come in with their contractor and they'll insulate the pipes, and hopefully we'll be more energy efficient down there. How much was that grant that they got from the United Illuminated? I forget. It was quite a bit of money, though. Hundred thousand? Uh, probably more than that. Wow. To do that. So uh, like I even have a solution for you to fund it. At the end of every year, I encumber different amounts of money from different departments in case we need it in emergencies for the coming year. So I have $235,000 encumbered from last year's budget, uh, 1920, that we could use to pay for this. And Does I that show up in our expense? Yes. Under the new MUNIS program, it shows up. If you go to page 24, Right down the bottom there under capital projects. Yeah, I saw that all, capital reserve. We didn't have anything. No, that's all different encumbrances from different departments from last year. And I haven't needed it, so I think now would be a good time to use it for this. So that money's not in our capital fund balance? No. So that sheet that we'll get to in a little bit. This, uh, this has actually already been expensed in yep. last year's budget. John, where is it on this page? 24. 24. 24. Oh, I was it's the 24. second to last item. Yeah, I don't see why we wouldn't do that then if the yeah, money's yeah. there. I mean, I'm, I feel comfortable enough now. We're at the end of the year, and I'll be doing this again in the current year budget for some things. So I just ask that whoever makes the motion, if you make the motion to approve it, that you use that account number. 214-50009. Five seven zero zero. zero, zero. Okay. Yeah, and from what, <laughs> and from what I understand, this is, this, quote is a lot lower than others had. So that that's. Actually, I think he was the only one that actually bid on it, and that's gone to the board of selectmen, and they've approved it already. So they approved the contract, and we're going to do an up to two hundred thousand. Right just to cover ourselves. Yep. I'm ready. Do you want me to do, you can do it? No. Uh, make a motion to allocate, well, hold on, let me get that account number, to allocate $200,000, or up, not to exceed $200,000. Right. Good. From our capital projects. No. Line item. No. No. Call it. Call it, just call the number. Okay. Yeah, because otherwise it's the capital project fund. Yeah. And we don't well, I'm going to say the number 214 Great. So there's a motion. Is there a second? Well, for the purpose of fixing pipes at High Plains. Here we go. Second? I'll second that. Second by Joe. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, unanimous. Great. John, item number seven, do we have that? Okay, we didn't get that memo from Christine, so I would ask that you do a motion to table it at this time. 
Okay, so is there a motion to table a discussion and vote to return excess cost sharing reimbursement to the Orange Board of Education? I'll make that motion. Motion by PJ. Is there a second? Second. Second by Joe. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed unanimous. Thank you. All right. Item number eight, discuss and possible vote to allow finance department to uncover money from police salary accounts in the amount of $104,000 to purchase two new police vehicles. Okay, we talked about this during the budget season. Uh, Chief Gagne had asked for two vehicles and we said we'd look at it at the end of the year subject to what their labor accounts were doing. It's kind of hard to look at their labor accounts now. We had some miscoding when we went from one computer system to the other. Right. So I put all the accounts together with the budget and what we spent. And we're going to have, with one payroll left, we're going to have about $135,000. So I ask that you make a motion that I be allowed to come up with 104 out of the different payroll accounts that are in the police not department budget, not to exceed also. And that, and just as a FYI, we think we've got that corrected for the new budget year. There's a motion by Jim. Is there a second? Second. Second by PJ. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay, item nine. Discuss and possible vote to allow finance department to encumber funds from park and rec labor accounts to pay for a new scoreboard at Brindley Field. Okay. This is a pet project of mine, those little league okay. fields, as, yes, as Kevin knows, we both played down there as children and scored down there. Sean was in charge of the... I played there, too. But you're a lot younger than Kevin. <laughs> <and I. laughs> Kevin, Kevin would be giving me a hard time about giving him a hit or a error. That's right. <laughs> But anyways, this is on this is on the Babe Ruth Field. This is on Bob Brindley Field down there. Amity High School plays one game a year down there. It's their senior night. It was a night this year where we had about ten scouts from different teams watching one of the players. Yeah. They turned on the scoreboard. It was a total embarrassment. It was an embarrassment. You couldn't even read what the runs were being scored. It was so bad. So the next day, I got on the phone with Dan uh, Lynch and told him, get somebody out there to get a price on fixing it. And he did, and they said it's beyond repair. It's 25 years old. Everything now is LED and electronic and everything else. So I said, get me a price on a new one. They came up with four different models. I talked, I spoke with him. I talked with Ernie up at Amity, who's the athletic director, who's bought a few up there and knows quite a bit about it. And we came up with this one model. I spoke with the first select, and he said if we could get it out of this year's budget, he was all for it. So they have money in their labor accounts left over. And I'd like to take the money out of their labor accounts, uh, 16, $15,000 to do that to get this that seems very reasonable so I mean, we uh, not, not to instead of the 15 158 with the contract just we just 15. do 16,000 yeah. if you want to do that that's yeah. fine not to exceed that way if you have yeah. something else I mean we have a beautiful complex down there do. and state of the art this is just okay go ahead Jim go ahead uh, uh, did this scoreboard have a bad winter no it hasn't worked years in that, yeah it's just been I mean 25 years is a long time man. So long Last year, I don't think they even turned it on. Yeah. The last well, couple years, isn't it? Yeah. You know, what I used to teach when I was, you know, when I was before I retired, um, we solved problems. I've never heard of this. And, and you know, it, it, I agree it's an embarrassment. But I, I just... your mic's on? I feel like uh, it might be off. It was off. Thank you. <laughs> I just, Greener light uh, makes it on. <laughs> I I just it's an embarrassment, and, and when I heard those words, that's why I'm saying did it have a bad winter? I mean, we should always not always say that we need to have taxes paid for things we would wish to have, but that doesn't mean we can't find a way. So like we did with the fire truck, right? 
uh, to solve problems. And so my two things, obviously vote for this. I hope it's good. I hope it's a real good one. And I trust your judgment since the, the research that you've done with the AD over at Amity. But I would like people to think that that the community works best when we solve our problems and we do so with minimal impact on taxes and that whatever the issue is and that that part of our role I think is to help that effort uh, so we're spending two hundred thousand dollars on pipes yeah, and sixteen thousand dollars on a scoreboard well pipes and to me the scoreboard of the building a lot of oh, people use high planes you know there's a lot of people use now. little league fields huh a lot of people use the little league fields I have two daughters. We don't use them, but I think this makes sense. Oh, I absolutely think this makes sense, PJ. Were you getting the feeling I was thinking opposite? I kind no. of what, no? No. Okay. Not at all. Part of, part of the problem with the I'd go start a bigger, thing for oh, Part sure. of the problem with the bigger fields down there, there's no structure like Little League that the kids play under. On the bigger fields, they're playing on the for the grind, which is a private entity Different that pays place. for the field yeah. to, to play on, or American Legion, which my nephew's playing on, or <coughs> there's another group that plays down there once in a while. So there's no structure that they're raising money like the Little League does with their uh, facilities, their uh, stand where they sell hot dogs and hamburgers and stuff down there. It's more like a transient group that come and go, even the town residents. They come, they drop off their kids, they play, they see them play, they go home. It's not a, a, a work and a maintenance, even maintenance thing the way there is with Little League down there. There used to be. So when I Brindley Field, does this affect so Brind many? Brindley yeah. and De Janeiro. Okay. Friendly and De Janeiro. The other, all the other fields down there come under Little League, and Little League either pays for 100% of the cost or some split with the town. Like they fertilize the fields, and the town pays 50% of the of the cost of the fertilization down there. Certain things the town will pay for. The portagons the town pay for down there. Uh, Insurance, obviously, things things like that. John, do you? Could we look into? I think this is necessary. I think we've all established that. Um, also, look into putting in scoreboards at Fred Wolf. Maybe one at the soccer. And one at lacrosse. And that you have to talk to the first selectman about. He's the one that's working on that now. Well, I know yeah. he's putting. I know he's investing a lot of money there. But you know, if we did one of each, maybe over the next few years. Yes. And, and like in the current budget, we had 60,000. I granted Park and Rec's programs were shut down, but we had revenue of 60,000 from their self-support. They do have a fund balance. I could look it up, but I'm not going to do it. That they, you know, and they could start since we didn't, there's no zero revenue that we took this year. And hmm. obviously they probably didn't have much, but going forward, they, they do have money on the, you know, that yeah. could be split to do something like that. That revenue that we show in our revenue budget though, that's to cover our benefits that we pay for the programs. In other words, the programs that don't go in the Park and Rec right. Department account, like the basketball program and stuff, we pay for that out of the general fund at the end of the year. We we re, we collect that money coming back, and that's what that, that is. It's not offset in the expense But account. this year, it's zero. we're not right. collecting anything. Uh, we may. Well, it's it's still at zero. No, it, it's not done until at the end of the year, as a uh, entry with the audit. Same thing. That's the same thing with the police special duty. Yeah, and that's the at VNA. zero. Those all are audit entries at the end of the year. I, w I would like to see those fields get some attention 362, too. You know, uh, Jeff, on page um, eighty-eight. Okay. Maybe we'll talk to you. Okay. Line eighty-six. Right. So, I mean, yeah. the other thing too that we should talk to Amity about. Maybe you could bring it up. So much of the money goes to the high school. Our junior high facilities are nowhere near the, uh, on a level playing field, pun intended, with the high school. I mean, well, they could use. When I first came to Orange Beach, a lot of attention. A lot. 
When I went to Amity the first time, I thought I had gone to a better Bates College. <laughs> no, I, I, listen, I, I know that, the, but... Junior high, the first time I went there, was far superior to anything I ever saw in Dorchester, Mass, where I grew up, but I agree with you. <laughs> you know, first of all, you have to find the soccer field and the baseball field, right, which is way Amen. in the back. But it's like a swamp. I mean, it's... Yeah. The drainage is horrible. Yeah. Jim said there's 362,000 in their fund balance. I don't know what that's allocated to, but yeah. we could take, money could be found for Wolf Park, yeah. depending on what's going on over there. Yeah, and one more years. thing. Since that Brimley Field, uh, I would be looking at what teams, I mean, it, it's a sought out location during the summer months for baseball. Increase your fees. I'm not saying you have to in one year correct collect 10 or 15 grand but we have had a problem in my judgment of lowballing fees for services even when we're selling out the capacity of a field or or even the park up there and I I think you know and I, sometimes when you have something like this that you're targeting it helps you know people and I, kind and of get I've, it going and I have spoken to Dan Lynch many a times about the fees down there I believe if they're playing a game at 7 o'clock at night down there and those lights go on, they should be paying a different fee than what they pay Great. on Saturday morning at 9 o'clock because there's a different cost to the town to do that. Are you talking about the other programs, the special programs? No, I'm just Is talking anybody? about baseball and Brindley or De Janeiro, Brindley Field, yeah. really, because yeah, there is. That's where when you turn those lights on, on, even though they're LED lights, there's it's a cost expense, to them. Of course. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the... There's the same cost to every game, no matter what, if we prep the fields or line the yep. fields or whatever. But there is an additional cost when those lights go on. Yeah, that makes sense. And in all fairness to Amity, Amity has been generous with us down there. So when it comes to the lighting and their cost for the facility. field. Yeah. yeah. Yep, just like when That's good. we went to them for, to fix some of the pool mm. with the blocks, they... they all right, so do we have a motion on this item? Yeah, let's make a motion just to, whatever it says there, Deb, uh, to allow the finance department to encumber funds from Park and Rec to pay up, up to 16000 for the new scoreboard you're playing right now. Second yeah. by Joe. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Opposed, abstain, unanimous. Okay, um, we have capital and we have fund balance and... Um, this, so item see. number 10 is discussion and possible vote to transfer funds from the general fund to the capital fund. Oh, I'm sorry, Kevin. This is the project capital balance sheet? Um, yeah, I've got, there's two Excel files. Yeah. I got Excel, so if we the could do some more of we could have it right there. Which of the two do we want to do first? It's actually two. Two pages. When you're looking at that, is this 600,000 for the roads? Yes. Is that, that is what you guys approved in April? Yeah, we did that. Right, but how about all the other roads that we talked about too? We did six hundred and six hundred is coming out of Losa. So that's and a hundred out of the it was so a one point three on total. Yeah, you're right, one Jeff, out of hundred out of the bu regular budget. I so can get the file. So we got one point three million total for roads. And they did a Perfect. lot of those roads already. That, that's what I heard. I heard they came out great. Yeah. yeah, they okay. do a good job. Yeah. Now we have a speeding problem. Of course, that's what happens. I, it, there's no, <laughs> and you have a lot more than a speeding problem in this town. Yesterday, I was on uh, Lambert Road. I was going to take a left uh, to go up Tyler City to head towards West Haven, and an SUV, I saw it coming, so I waited, never even slowed down. Yeah. Lambert and Tyler City. I mean, it, it's... There was there was accident last Friday. Oh, we had night, two meeting house and on yeah, Lambert, two one car took accidents. Down, both took down telephone poles. And Friday afternoon, you had an older gentleman go through the the barricade at the pond at the little league and yeah. end up in the pond. So, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, the pond isn't that deep. The car did, car never went down, but the the fire department or somebody had to pull them out. But those two single car accidents that took out telephone poles the same night, mm. were there injuries or, 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 or I don't every, think everybody so. was okay? My brother actually had to go out, I think, for that call, but I don't think there was. Speeding, texting, whatever. Yeah. 
Oh, for Kevin, I was coming over. How about this? 10:15 Saturday morning. I'm coming up Prindle Hill. I'm coming back from uh, Walmart and Aldi's. Um, and I'm using the back roads. Coming back up to Prindle Hill, black car, New York plates in front of me. Two cars in front of him. Now, Prindle Hill. When was the last time you drove on Prindle Hill and see someone hit the grass on the right-hand side? All right. <laughs> then go over the middle line. And I'm going, whoa, I'm not getting close to this dude. And this happens going down the hill. 10 o'clock in the morning. Gets to the light, the light is green, stops the car in the right hand of the two lanes, but has the left hand blinker on. I'm not touching this job, right? <laughs> Turns left, zooms down the street, then I see the brake light, zoom, brake light, zoom, brake light, gets the lamp. All the while doing a little bit of this, and I'm thinking just like you say, Texan. Crosses Lambert Road after stopping for the light. And the telephone pole before you get to the where you come in from the old way from Silverbrook. Why that is in half halfway cut down is because this guy went went flying this way, that way, and right into the pole. Ten fifteen in the morning. I mean, hmm. you know, I can see people looking and texting, but unless you're driving with your knee and it's got power steering you're not used to, I'm not. I don't know how you do that. I mean, obviously, you think of other factors. <clears throat> so, you know, and I called it in and waited for the for the police to arrive. And so I agree with you. But I, here I was, first-hand viewer. John, which one of the two do you want to start with? The uh, They both kind of go together, I guess. Well, you I, can see. Walk put us up, through. Put up the capital one, right, I guess, good. first. Yeah, because that's the one, because what we're going to do right off the bat is cross off that 200000 Right. All right, and we can... I didn't want to be presumptuous, so I put it there. Yep. So where is that, Kev? Somewhere back down here. So right you're going to take the pipes from High Plains out of this? Right. Correct. All right. Okay, so that leaves you... You yeah. have 918 now in your capital fund. All right. So let's go to our fund balance. Did we much. approve the 95 for the sidewalk? Yes. Okay. That was the last meeting also, I believe. All right. For 517. That was Mary Ellen, right? Mariel in the library. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, okay. boy, I, I, this is interesting. So now if we go to, to the bond sale? our fund balance, mm -hmm. we could see uh, where we where we were at 7-1-2020 per the audit. You'd see that number. Right. And you'd see what that percentage is against the two different... Uh, Budgets we had 1920 and 2021, 20, I guess mm -hmm. it is. And then we bring it down, we show we um, under, I predict we're going to gonna underspend our current budget by a million dollars. I'm yeah. proposing that we transfer a million dollars to our capital fund. And I put that 300000 in there from the OVNA since they're running a $300,000 deficit over the two years. So if we do those, if we do that, that would bring our projected general fund at six thirty twenty one, which is in a couple of days, to mm -hmm. thirteen eight seventy five, or eighteen point eight one percent of the twenty twenty one budget, or if you take it against the twenty one twenty two budget, it would be eighteen point two three. Still pretty high. John, the underspent budget, this one right here. Um, we haven't gotten to that, and I don't think we want to go there for sure. Would that be a combination of having a couple of bucks more in our revenue and less being spent in our expenditures, a combination of those two combination things? Combination of the two. And, and you're, you're and estimating pretty, that. Yeah, and that's pretty conservative. I, okay. My guess would be it's probably going to be a little higher than yeah. that. But. Okay. Till we actually get there. And the 300, yeah. we're not taking action on at all right now. Right, right. So that could be financed somewhere else or from fund balance, however. Right. Worry about that. Okay. I mean, um, I, I, would, I would even go as high as maybe a million five if you wanted to there. It's up to you, it's up to you guys. Uh, I would be good for a million five, PJ. Yeah, if you yeah. put that in, Jim, yeah. you can see where those yeah. percentages change. And take the 300 out for now. 
Uh, okay, so that would make it 17 there. Um, so just take if you're taking notes at home, as they say, uh, it would be at 17.57, but if we take the 300 out, that's going to move it back up. So we're in the area code of 18%. How does that compare to our peers? Some are a lot higher. Some are right where we are. And if you compare us to the New Havens of the world, we look like we're billionaires. Yeah, New Haven, West Haven, Hamden. Does yeah. that affect our bond rating at all, Kev? There's some. We're, we'd be good at that. I mean, they look at that all the time. That's one of the main drivers that they look at. There's other towns that are our peers that are pushing 20, 25 percent. I think that's a little high myself, but that's where they are. Woodbridge has probably got more. I have really, what happened out there? Because they didn't a couple of years ago. Yeah, I think they they put some in. I think there's a. If I could find it, I'll look. There's a. It's a report we get once a, once a year, I think, from the state, and it shows everybody's fund balance. That would be great what percentage of the, the yeah. yeah, that would be good. If to I could find that, or if I yeah, I, 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 be I thought we were one. stronger than Woodbridge at one point. Could be wrong. I could be wrong too, and maybe in another town. With a 44 mil rate, they they had 25 percent fund balance. I don't think I'd be happy. Um, yeah. Did you just have a thunderstorm out there? I, I, I thought I saw something flash across. Yes, there was a possibility 30% at 8 o'clock and 50% at no, 9. Nice. Well, my windows are open, no, so it's... it's nice. uh, we may have to take <laughs> a... Uh, <laughs> so, so, John, that million dollars in the current budget? Yes. I saw a flash. Yes. I propose a motion um, to transfer a million and a half, 1.5 million from the general fund to the capital fund. I second that. Uh, fund balance. Uh, PJ, you can't leave until we from vote. From general fund to capital yeah, fund. Yeah, you have to. All right, got to speed it up. PJ's got to shut his windows. Second that vote. I second it. He seconded it. Is there any further discussion? Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. <clears throat> Thank you. You got half a million more than you came for. Okay. Plus, the, the bonding, the rating companies look at that fact, too, that we have that and we plan mm -hmm. things out. So it's a Yeah, and the consistency, too. Hey, the, <coughs> just, a, just as a side note, we did have that meeting with S&P uh, S for the bond. I think I forage is all the, the result, the report they gave. And yes. it was the same gentleman we've had for the past two times and he's developed a very good rapport with the first selectman. We throw it to Jim. Jim talks about everything going on in town. I give a couple little minutes spiel about how our fund balance is good, our capital fund is good. We've had X number of years of surplus, and everybody's all happy, and we go home happy. And we end up with bonds at 2% taxable and 90.99 untaxable for the refunding so I was trying to look it up Kevin I couldn't find it immediately so I'll, I'll give it a invitae oh I remember doing that anybody's got a uh, should I get a Darby air conditioner room air conditioner portable is it raining no it sounded like it all right so all right so item number 11 discussion and approval of minutes from May 17th 2021 our special meeting yeah. Okay. So here. Minutes. That must be a. Uh, Start with you, John. Okay, page two. Under item D. The first sentence, Deb. Mr. Kashmir advised that fiduciary advisors, I make that, has merged with another company in Chicago yep. and has been rebranded. And then on page three, under item six, I would just make that Mr. Leahy displayed. I would take that again out of there. If that's okay with you, Jim. That's what happened. 
And that's all I really had. Uh, let's see. BJ might need some assistance from you on this one. On page two, under B, I'll make it large for us on the screen. Um, it, it, one of the words in, in the second, uh, under B, the second bullet, uh, the, the second sentence of that second bullet, and it starts with the words, he spoke. He spoke about the importance of diversity in the portfolios, which are, allows for broader returns. It felt to me the word broader was way, way off, um, but I didn't have a, a one that might be better. How about uh, the purpose of diversification in a portfolio is to mitigate risks. How about to you, minimize risk, to minimize which allows risk. for right. balanced returns? I would but. caution the use of returns and focus more on the risk, which is what we're trying to do. So which affects returns, right? But so maybe just say which allows, which helps mitigate risk. Which helps mitigate risk. You go with that then. Thank you. On the uh, third page, I think this is my final two, I'll have to check, but they're the same one in each case, under six and also um, seven, where we have the motion, Mr. Leahy made a motion, Mr. Motherly made a motion, I think it should be to allocate, no D, in each case. Good? That's all I had. Do you remember on page one, under new business, the presentation by Michelle? Mr. Shanley inquired if there was a cap on the pension plan. I think it was something specific with the pension plan. I don't think. The second to last bullet on the bottom. Do you remember? I don't remember. Which was her presentation? Fiduciary report? No, she was the one that said how they come up. No, with I'm, the, I'm looking at the files. I was uh, thinking that by putting it up, town employee pension? Probably that one. Yes, yes, okay. ours. So maybe if we looked at it, we don't have to spend a ton amount of time, but let's give it a minute and slide through. And see if this got years of service, that wasn't much. And we had that. Turn the page. Um, and we had that. What, where is the thought, PJ, um, when you say a cap on a pension plan? What might have triggered that thought? I know it was something specific because I wouldn't have just asked. Yeah. If there was a cap on the pension plan, because I know there's not, but um, I can't remember what it was specifically. That's okay. Well, if it comes back, yeah, we'll get in. But that's that's what she was using. Do you want to strike that line, or you that's still want to say, do you leave it there, or do you want to strike it? I think we could leave it. Um, It's not that big a deal. I just, I think there was m something a little more specific <laughs> that I was asking about, and um, I can't wonder if she was, was, maybe when she was talking about the volatility of the plans and the five year smoothing, is that where it came up? Could it came up? I don't think so, John. Is there a cap like per person each, like per, month, per annual maximum? Could you bring up the other report? The other report, yeah. I think that's this one. And this one's PowerPoint, so it kind of... But this was the second one, right, PJ? Mm. Okay. I mean, it was like the first seven slides were with marketing, right? I mean... But and this got into some stuff that was interesting, I thought. Sorry. Uh, 
page view fit width. No, that's, that's not it, that's for sure. This is the. This is the other one. Yeah. yeah. No, it's okay. okay. We can just leave it. All right. So we good. good. Anything else? Is there a motion to approve the minutes as amended? So moved. Motion by Joe. Is there a second? Sure. Anyone? Yeah. Second by. Well, before we do that, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Now we're in the other, any further discussion mode. <laughs> this will be real quick. I, I don't want to belabor this, but under, so the next bullet point, the 6.25 expected rate of return, that's really the factor that they use. Yeah. I just think we should change that to, Ms. Boyles reported that the factor the town uses is 6.25%. The factor? Is there a name for the factor, like a, a, an adjective? I think. Investment? I don't know. I think that's, Back I think it's called, one. yeah. You do it for a living, so I'm not. I don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do this. Well, you're aware of it. You hear the jargon every right. day all the time. Yeah. Right, the factor. No, no. I know it's 6.25. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you want to, what do you want to call it? <laughs> that just leads to our contribution for some amount. So. Right, yeah, right. All right, we're ready for a vote, Kim? Well, now we got to amend the motion. Oh, okay. So Joe took back his motion, right? Back my motion. <laughs> All right. So I will make a motion to approve approve the minutes so as amended. As amended, the second time. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So Sir, second. All good. Second by Jim. No, no, Joe. Joe. Joe's got it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Unanimous. Thank you. All right, item 12, to review revenue and expense reports for May 31st, 2021. So we have handiwork here, John, at the last page. So why don't we get to the handiwork? Because this is different from what we've seen before. Doesn't really appear to be user friendly, but I very much appreciated you it was doing the it, was, it wasn't it wasn't user friendly when I saw it either. Yeah. But, <laughs> so uh, what what I did educate is, us here. What I did is I took the the revenue number there, the fourteen million three oh five and the eighty eight oh sixty and yeah. I backed out the money for the <clears throat> for the bonding and the refinancing that was done. Right, to get us down, up above to, it, right? To, to get us down to what to, the report to, should be. Okay. So we're showing we're showing four fifty six <coughs> three eighty two to the good over what we budgeted so far. Now I do caution you on that because out of that money it's gotta come the excess cost, uh, special education costs to the board of ed. Right. Which right now is two hundred and forty one six fifty. But there are audit entries to be made for park and rec that we do at the end of the year for police special duty. And if the VNA turns a profit, the VNA. So that'll bring it up. Well, they're not going to turn a profit if they make any money at all. Well, yeah. Well, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. Uh, the, other, the other thing is, just because July 1 is around the corner, the tax collector, we have open books on revenue until September 1st. So anything that should be in this year gets to be posted, gets posted here. Again. And we're at 100% plus anyway on them. Yeah. So she might get more money, but we're already over our budgeted amount. Right. Um, my concern, since we're jumping around, no, let's is, go straight through it, yeah. is the building inspection. That's great. I mean, I'm, I'm shocked that we had more revenue during a pandemic. I'm, I'm shocked by a few of these. To um, tell you but the just so for people, who, if they are watching at home, let's let give them the courtesy of, like we we get used to it, but it's not an easy get used to. A negative number under remaining balance is a good thing. Yeah. Okay. 
So, John, my, my other, my, my concerns, without getting into too much, is we've received nothing from University of New Haven. Correct. Are we expected to, or are they becoming a bad neighbor? Uh, let's say they may become a problem. Okay. Let's leave it at that right one? now. No. Yeah, that's... Is that pilot money, John, or what, what is it? No, it's a deal in lieu of pilot. But pilot comes into it. If we get more pilot, they pay less money. Same thing with Yale. But they're not paying at all. Yeah. That's a big zero right now. Wow. Page three. Page three, Joe. Very surprised. It's $100,000. Um, I like that we didn't have to use the 300 and fund balance. And the other thing is, I don't know where, where you stand with posting just because I know rates are drastically horrible. But I don't know. There's like the no interest, interest here. There's no interest. Art keeps telling me that. There's no interest. <laughs> okay, so the, I think I think he told me the interest rate is 0. 0.0025, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, because even you guys can't put your money in Ally Bank. Can't you? Can't put town money in just about anything. <laughs> yeah. So the stiff is nothing with the state, which usually pays the best rate. Mm. So we're not. You don't think we're missing any of these postings yet? Hey, you might be missing some, but you're probably talking about a couple of thousand dollars. So you hit the big one there, Kevin. The Pilot University of New Haven. Um, that might come as a shock to any parent who's sending a student to the University of New Haven who lives in Orange. Uh, it's not a cheap university, as I understand it. Um, Kev, please continue. Yep. No, um, so we'll get through that. The, the bank interests are all basically zero. That's... Um, Just give me a heads up what page you're when you get there. There's your police... Uh, the duty. special duty, the yeah, hundred thousand. Yeah, we'll, yeah usually we'll, comes we'll in late. We'll get that. Right? We'll get that. We'll get that. Okay, we'll get good. That. And I would imagine the DUI enforcement. We just didn't get the grants because they weren't pulling people over very much during the pandemic. Hmm. Uh, actually, they had to put special patrols on. The cost is somewhere else, and the income comes in. It may have come in in the previous year. It goes over like a two-year, uh, not a two-year period, but it kind of splits the year. So, but we're not going to get any more money out of that? No. that they'll, they'll be filing for another one shortly. Okay. I think they file in October for that, and that covers the rest of the year. Okay. Fire Marshal was short 6500 6, but that's yeah. expected with things being closed. Okay. Uh, the park and rec self support we talked about earlier, that's on page five. Right. Um, yeah, we and should library fees, that. there's just obviously they weren't even open. Right. Are they open now? Yes. Yeah, they, they just opened. They just last opened. Week for the first time. Good. Uh, we had, we probably saved a little money over there because she had people leave. <laughs> we didn't save a lot we when you look at the salary lines, no, they're still pretty full. But we wouldn't yeah. let her hire people, the part time people and some of the full time people because she wasn't open. I mean, right. they were only open a couple hours a day. I couldn't see hiring people when they weren't open full time. And I don't What's think this, she liked uh, that. Page product. five permits food service, John? 25000 on the boat. Uh, the, that's the food service license that everybody, every food service has to buy every year. I believe that goes out in June, so you'll see a late posting on that. Thank you. John, what's the conveyance fee at 324? So that's pay. when you sell your house. The state gets a part of it, and the town gets a well, we small part. Uh, we're, we're 324. What page are you? Page 3, under town clerk. What is the state collection? Is it one point two five? I think oh no! You see that? You see that's a that's a misposting. Look at the line underneath. Oh, you know, that makes sense. I was wondering what that was too. That makes sense. I think what happened when we changed over the new system, the three hundred instead of getting in the original estimate column, got in the transfer column. And we're ahead because there were definitely more sales for higher prices. Yeah. 
Jeff, how much comes back to the town percentage-wise? Is it a quarter percent? No, I don't think it's that high. Is it one, one, two, five to the state for conveyance? Something like that. Point seven five to the town, I think. I should one, know because I see it in the yeah, maybe, right. maybe right. Yeah. 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 Kev, you said you had a lot of um, thoughts We're on page five. If we're going to go sequentially. Page five. No, we just had the park and rec and the library fees okay. were mine. The permits I know are going to be down. All right. Um, Kev, since the library was closed, did we reduce the payroll at all? Well, well that's the expenses on the expense side. Sorry, it's pretty just checking. Just checking. I think we were just talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it was another meeting. <laughs> No, in the state other, that's COVID money, right, for the director of health, the 136? Right. <clears throat> You're going to see his salary item in the expense side yep. is over because he got that. Okay. Oh, it should be. Yeah. And they just they just applied for another grant. I think it's $36,000 for the next 18 months. They got it approved, him and Dr. Muhammad. We haven't seen it yet, but once we see it, We'll start giving it to them in their salary once a month for their extra hours. John, are there any one-time government stimulus money in this revenue, in these revenue numbers at this point? And there's a lot of stimulus Just the money. 136. That's it, Kev. So let's not get used to that money. It's a one-time thing yeah. for the most part. We, we did, okay. We, yeah. Because I made them put it to their budgets, they had to stay within their budgets, most of them mm -hmm. stimulus for expenses, and most of them did. I mean, the library was closed for a while. Where, where the biggest expenses were, were probably in the health department, trying to, you know, keep the town going. And unfortunately, Brian, at the time, right at the time this broke, he lost his assistant, too. Right. So he basically went through the whole thing with doing it himself, working nights, working weekends, and things like that. And Dr. Muhammad also. I mean, he's, he's supposed to work five hours a week. He probably worked 55 hours a week for the year. I see we got in the middle of page six there the, um, the Orange Public Schools. Now, is that the money that the the, um, the state grant for the town is that million? Yeah, we have we got a little more than what we had budgeted for. We got right. a million forty-five. Okay, but that two forty-one six fifty. That we, that's the exact same number we were saying. Also right. happens in our expense side. Right. Which has a wash there. The the line below the workman's comp reimbursement. That's the money that flows in from the insurance company for everybody that we have off on workman's comp. We pay them 100%, and then the workman's comp insurance refunds us back 75% of it. So that comes in there. <coughs> so the 45, we get it or no? That's over budgeted right now? Because people weren't working, so they weren't getting hurt? It just means that we over budgeted, yeah. And the 200, John, uh, you said you uh, that's the public health right. nursing. What do you expect? What are you thinking? I'm hoping we're going to get something, but okay. the last I looked, they were 100,000 down for the year. Okay. So. Yeah, it's part of the 300 overall. Yeah. All right, and that brings us to the page we were talking about before. So, no, we are not getting 88 million. By the way, this was this kind of advertises itself as an expense report, uh, a, a revenue report. How does the bond proceeds end up in our revenue report? Because it's revenue coming into the town. Yeah, we have to put it somewhere. Yeah, it's but revenue. It, it, but it's not part of the budget. But it's part of the general fund. It's not part of the. We haven't budgeted for it. You're correct, but it's part of the revenue coming into the town. It's going to, when, when we close on Racebrook Country Club, there's probably going to be an expense number in the, in the general fund for that part going out also. Because it was, it was voted, it was basically voted on by the taxpayers to increase your, your general fund expense and revenue. I don't recall 
How long have I been doing this? 2005? Looking at an expense file for the budget of a year, and, and we've had bonds before. Correct. And we've never come into a meeting or do our homework and have to be you having to do what you did on the, that's shown Correct. on the screen here in pencil. All right. And then we're sitting here saying, what's going on here? When we're, we kind of, for this document, we kind of want to say, how are we doing in terms of the budget for the revenue? Mm -hmm. This seems to be misplaced. It's you've never before purchased land the way you're purchasing it. You've, the, the yep, resident. Yeah, have. No, not when I've been here. <laughs> well, the other bonds were for specific different items. This is, this is unique. Mm -hmm. So the last land purchase the we had was before I, 2005? Well, you, you and Farm bought it. Right? No, we bought it. I don't know, I don't know how that was accounted for, but this is land that basically the taxpayers increased our our uh, our budget for the year to purchase, mm -hmm. both in revenue to to fund it, and both in expense to uh, to actually buy it when the time comes. I, the other system may have had a different way of accounting it for it too. Or was it? Well, I appreciate yeah. you it went to the trouble. In, yeah. You went to. And believe me, to if I could, if I could have did without doing this, no, I good. certainly would have. Okay, I understand. Because it Thank means you. I'm going to have to do it quite a few times between now and when we finally put this. But it's at too. the end of the report. It stands right out, and you wash it right back out. Mm -hmm. uh, can you move it down below <laughs> on its own, John? No, yeah. can't no it's right. got yeah. to be yeah. in the totals. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, if Mr. Chairman says it must be, a, I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. I just, you know, it's no, I, two numbers. Yeah. We, they're at the last it two numbers. It took me a while to figure out what was going on. I mean, Mr. Williams, that. Uh, is in charge of that on me. And uh, 13.3 is allocated for, of course. Okay, for I'm going to get on to the uh, Including expenses here, boys and girls. Yeah. Kevin, you also said you had a lot of comments. First of all, I'd like to get to the back end first since that's where the same issue that we just discussed on the revenue is. So, John, why don't you clear up, if you could, for us. I mean, I don't know why it took me so long in my... In, in to recognize that these numbers up here were the same three that were down here. I was expecting them to be up above, but anyway. Okay, so the same type of thing happened here because we refunded two sets of bonds. They came out and a new charge went in. So you're seeing, you're seeing the bonding come out, the million eight forty and the million three two five zero. Oh, right. And then there was another sixty thousand nine thirty seven. Which I subtotaled at five million one fifty. Right. And then if you take that off of that seventy six eight ninety eight, that right. brings us to seventy one thousand seven forty seven. Instead of the seventy six, right? right. Yeah. And that means currently, right now, we have two million two fifty seven in unspent budget. And that's the seventy four mi seventy four nine eighty six minus this. No, it's no. the it's the two million eight ninety three. Yes. Plus five million one fifty. So it's a negative against a positive. I thought I was being very kind when I said this was not user friendly. <laughs> uh, Just have to be a calculator. But if this is what we have to do, <laughs> all right. So rather than saying to ourselves, my gosh. We have overspent by two million already with a month to go. Three million. Three million. Two point eight. Two point. Okay. Two point eight million. Hmm. Uh, oh, that's right, because we have to add in this nine seventy. You see what happened here, Jim, is those bonds that were refunding yeah. had to be paid off. Right. So they were paid off here, and the new and the new bond put in place. To yeah, but I think we're confusing how we're doing in an operating budget with cash flow. No, we're not. Well, this seems to be from what I heard Kevin said is that we have to account for the cash somewhere. So it starts to sound but like you cash. You also flow. have to account for the expense somewhere. You had a you had an additional expense in the in the budget by paying off the refunding bonds. Instead of right. paying two hundred and fifty thousand right. this year, you pay one million eight hundred and forty thousand. Right. Using the the number. So you 
paid more than what you had originally budgeted for, but you took in revenue to offset that payment. Did we budget for this? No. Not for the refunding, no. You budgeted what the normal... What the 20, payments would have what been. What the payment would have been. But when they went out to bond, we had the opportunity to save... $570,000. Yes. By, by, you know, doing the additional bond. It's at $4.7 million, so... Mm -hmm. Well, Kevin, you, you have uh, said you had a number of things you wanted to ask questions well, on. Well, most of them were on the, ex the revenue side, but on the expense side, I go right to page four on the legal. Okay. Yeah, we're missing quite a few bills there. So. Okay. Our first selectman's a little slow on paying Approving things? Yeah. All right, so that's, I, I thought... I did. When we you... only spent 25% yeah. on zoning, knowing <laughs> yeah. those housing issues and stuff that's been going on. I was kind of hopeful, but okay. Uh, we also just, uh, I did the transfers for the salary accounts that I hadn't been able, had time to do for the raises that took place for the non-union people and got those in there also. So they're in here? They're in here. Okay, so when we get to like the temporary sal salary under zoning for 15000 That's that's going to surplus at the end of the year. Okay. So that one's good. Um, there's some stuff marked off very. Uh, One of the things you're going to see is the also, registrars is crazy. Yeah, we get we got this money in the revenue account that accounted for. You can't see it's under miscellaneous. That accounts for some of the registrars' overages. Probably most of it. I think they, I think between the registrar and the town clerk, I think they got seventeen thousand dollars in additional money for the November election. That's uh, page eight, right, guys? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Right at the top. But there. John, when I look 8, at eight thousand over, I got salary, and it doesn't. The description gets cut off, but we have salary registrar twenty eight five twenty in the budget. Salary registrar twenty eight five twenty a few lines down in the budget. One's got a D in front of their uh, at the end of it, and one's got an R. Hmm. How are they different <clears throat> when it's the actual? One thing I didn't do, and I noticed that now, they both, both the Democrat and the Republican, got a little stipend at the end of the year for working hard. So that's the difference between budget and expended. Well, I know the why expended they, went way up, but... The, why they so, have different amounts. So, so the Democrat or the Republican, one of them didn't get the same amount of money, no, and they should they, have. One of them might have attended more classes or something. They get paid when they go to classes and take training and stuff like that. So the, the Republican one, she's new. She might have had to take few more classes between January and now than and they the get paid Democrat they get paid for that okay and then the temporary salaries are yeah those were all election people so is that is that one time higher I don't remember what we did in the current budget did we raise those? Numbers? They only get raised, they got raised in January. They can only get raised at the beginning of their term. Their term was in January. No, no, I mean the, the, the temporary salaries that went from 12 to the actual oh. 16. Uh, we, did a, we actually did do a one-time raise for the November election because nobody was willing to work. Okay, so that might be, that, those numbers that won't be, be this high again. Now. And was some of it like because of all the yeah. mail-in ballots and everything? Okay. You got a better memory than me. I forgot about that. About? That we had to raise it. <laughs> I remember we had to do something. Yeah. On the police side, we you already covered the police with, there's excess salaries when they're all combined, but. Um, yeah, I don't know the, what this happened. This utility yeah. at 9, yeah, 39,000 39, yeah. with nothing. That, that position has been open 
and he didn't fill it because of the COVID. And he's now in discussions with the first selectman to combine that position with another position and raise the salary there. So I'm not sure what's going to happen with that. I had asked to take that out of the new budget, and I was told no. So. Okay. So all the salaries are 166, the 23 investigative services. A little bit closer. Yeah, just, <laughs> um, My next one's on twelve, uh, page twelve, Kevin. So we're, I'm on page twelve too. So go wait. shoot. Uh, the storm one, the hundred seventy-nine thousand, John. Yes. So we are experiencing that as an expense, and we're expecting some component of that, perhaps a haul of it. Um, to be come revenue at some future some point, but it's theme point. RN. Right. right. All right, so we have to accept it as an expense now. Right. Thank you. And then that revenue will fall in whatever budget when it comes. So whatever that'll budget help. year. Right. Yeah. John, how about under that, the water, the fire, yeah. is that? Uh, we, there's one more fire hydrant bill coming. Okay. That probably should be in that. 287 range, so so we may have a so little extra save some money, money there. Yeah. There. Okay. There's, there's, if you look at the salary things here, there's one more payroll for okay, the year. Sure. Just talking in oh, general okay. now. There's one more payroll for the year that the employees will get paid Friday, and then I looked <coughs> at the calendar. There's eight of the 10 days of the next one are really June, so there'll probably be a cruel 80% or whatever the first payroll in July is. We'll probably come back to the year this year as a cruel. And Art usually is pretty good at taking care of that when the time comes. Okay. Roger that. Like gasoline's probably not posted because I can't yeah, believe we it. Gotta, we've already been put on notice. We're not going to use what we what we allocated for, so they're going to be looking for another little uh, uh, penalty. Penalty, yeah. Plus, prices are going up. No, not for next year. We bid well, it did. in. We bid it in December of twenty when the prices were, we're way stuck. down. Good. We're actually. I really think we're going to save a quarter a gallon on gasoline in the new year. Twenty-five cents. Yeah. That's a big win. Yeah. All right, so Kevin, you're up to gasoline, so you must be on page. No, now that I'm shooting around, I'm, now I'm up to 15. 15. You can see, go back to 14, you can see the snow removal. Oh, yeah. We didn't have a good year. Hmm. That, that, that wasn't even hmm. worth hmm. it. We didn't have a lot of snow. Did we? Weekend we, storms. We had enough time. that we had to call, to call the contractors in. That right there is all contractors. Yep. Oh, wow. I must have been in Florida, Joe. <laughs> but we get, get to the community center. Uh, 15, the salaries of the custodians. And a lot, and I'm going to have the same questions on the library and everything. These buildings weren't at, being used for anything. We had to clean them. We had to clean them extra. Even though nobody was there? Even though nobody was Well, when people... Well, I get it. They, you got like, a union contract For there. instance, when I got sick and I tested positive, they had to do special cleaning upstairs. When they got sick in the library and tested positive, had to do special cleaning. Is it your fault? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just, you know, some of the utility costs just seemed too high for, you know, assuming the building was, you know, 80% mm -hmm. vacant during the yeah. most of the year, but... Okay. Well, remember, the employees were still mm -hmm. there. All the employees worked right through it. There wasn't one employee here that lost a paycheck during the, the whole year. Okay. All right. All right, so page 16 starts the library, right? So really... Mm -hmm. The only thing would be the one on page 17, that salary line. 
John, that's where they, they reduced the workforce? That's pretty much, that's the part-time people and the full-time people that aren't in the union. And those were the people that uh, a lot of them had left, so we say some salary there. Mm hmm. That's 17. Camp started today over at High Plains, so if you're going by and you see. Well, that's great. Kitties running around, they're full. Oh, good. That's totally really good. Full. Oh, I got a big kick as I was driving in. <laughs> It reminded me so much when I went to my daughter's first, even younger than yours, PJ. Um, uh, it was a soccer thing, although they were playing you know, softball or baseball. And it was just to see these little little ones running around the field and fathers are out there helping, or parents, maybe they were mothers as well. Uh, it was just a joy to see it, you know. Well, John, when we get to... They also... Uh working on the tennis courts over there. If you go over there, the tennis courts all chewed up. Yep. Temporary salary pool. That is mm. over budget by almost 13 grand. Yeah, because when they reopened, they were closed for a very short amount of time. When they reopened, they had to reopen with more people to because of COVID to keep it clean and everything what else. Did, what, so, so they were open? They were open most of the time. There was probably only a 30, 30, 60 day period where they were closed. I would bet that there wasn't a lot of people. Yeah. Oh, no, no, there were. Really? Uh, uh, okay. More Good. than you would have Good. expected. I mean, the if other, anybody's going out for a workout, I'm all in. The other problem there is minimum wage has gone up now three years in a row, and oh, yeah. we haven't boosted that account. So, she. I think we did in the new budget. AOC's no. proposing $45 an hour. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to get 40 uh, I'm not going to say it. No, let it go. Yeah. yeah. You get in trouble. Okay. Some of that. The, the director of health, we knew that was going to be over budget. The poor guys. Working less so. Okay. The, the nursing staff, too. Yeah, that's what I, they, I, they, I the expect that is what was going on. A, yeah. They, so if anybody has questions, I'm pretty much done bugging you until we get to page 21. You can Let's see. Go right there. You can bug them right now, okay? Community services. That uh, the director, the administrator, the director, that was Judy's, not Judy, uh, Joan's salary when she left the couple of weeks. I'm not sure who's being charged there, but Dennis Marsh was named interim director last week. But he was already employed. He, he yes. So he just should be mu so, moving lines. But where is he? He is. Uh, <coughs> is he the administrative assistant? No, he is. Where the heck is he? So we're not saving 56, it's somewhere no, else. Somewhere in between. Okay. I think he's uh, on page 22, salary elderly, where it says elderly there. Yeah. I think that's him. I think that's okay. where he is. So somebody needs to fill that position Eventually. and he's now the other director? Yeah. Okay. And the van drivers, is that real savings because they weren't really driving anybody? That around? probably will be real savings because they didn't drive for a number of weeks. 
I would say so, since they didn't hit 50%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about on 23, all those big numbers, are this at just like Social Security, are we? We still got another payroll. Okay. So that's not. We will be. have some savings. What I, what I may do with some of that, though, I may encumber it into uh, sick, accrued sick leave because we have some big payments coming when a couple of people retire, whenever okay. they retire. So it might be better to do that than to uh, let it fall back to uh, fund, fund balance. balance. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Insurance. We're gonna. We're going to have a little, maybe a little savings there. Depends what happens with Race for Country Club. If it closes this year, I'm told we could have a $15,000 hit. hit for that. Okay. So, and then we'll have it for next year. So I may take both this year and next year's um, payment number, out of that. Yeah. Yep. And then I need some money for the workman's comp audit also. So that may go away. Okay. So that's at the bottom of that one there. Thank you, John. Uh, so we're coming is OGAT there on what page 24. You can skip back and forth, whatever the team wants to do. Um, Kev, you uh, any eyeballs some things here? No, I'm good now. Okay. So we reviewed. There's a capital project reserve we already hit earlier today. Yeah. That was right. my, that was my yeah. last right. item, other than. And what you hit earlier, Jim, was these bonds on the last page, so. Yeah, well, um, yeah, I just wanted to, you know, start with the overall and then come back to the detail, I thought. All right, Isaiah. Any other questions from anyone? No. Okay. No. And we'll move on to old business. Review detailed costs of tropical storm. I can never pronounce it. Isaiah. Is Isaiah I this hasn't changed since our last meeting. I don't. I don't much. think so. Yeah, because we met on the 17th and the 12th, so it's the same dollar amount, but we still mm -hmm. don't. Yeah. No. I haven't. I haven't talked to Mr. Britton about where they stand with it. At one point, they were moving along pretty good. He had made some filings with them that they had asked. They had asked for. Oh, a couple of things on here, if the insurance would cover it, and we went to the insurance company, the insurance company denied it and gave us a letter. So we forwarded that to them. Uh, I think there may be a couple more charges for the wood recycling. But that's that problem's getting cleaned up down there also. There'll be a new contractor taking over on July 1 down there at a little higher rate than what we're paying, but it's hopefully it'll solve some of the problems we've had down there. Okay. All right. The joint meeting with the OBNA, there's still nothing set, correct? No. She wasn't, she actually had been on vacation. She did review the tape of the meeting where we talked about it. She was preparing something but she wasn't, she wasn't able to attend this meeting. So I told her I'd throw it out to you guys and you girls to uh, decide if you wanted to have a joint meeting, wait until our next regular scheduled meeting, see if she could attend it. I leave it up to yeah, you. Yeah, I, I don't really want, I'm not looking to have a special meeting during the summer. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'd rather have it. Who's in charge of the OVNA? Uh, Lisa Pimento. So that's it. You know, just keep in touch with her if she's available at our next meeting or the one after, you know, hopefully okay. between now and I, I August. I was hoping that we weren't going to need a July meeting. Yeah. I At this point right now, I don't see a need unless you guys well, want it. Well, let's go back to the Emory thing in, in, in terms of next steps. Um... What, was it John or was it you, PJ, who asked whether or not Amity was aware? I think you, PJ, was aware, but the, that our budget includes 875 in revenue from Amity surplus in the current budget year. What sort of next? I, I would think. How about we send an email? I think it should come from Kevin. I think. Yeah, we email them and then we attend their meeting, but that doesn't that doesn't need mean unless we have appropriations to do with the town that we would have to meet 
formally here for Amity. We wouldn't. We did, it doesn't do them any good. We can. I get to email the whole board and her. I mean, they saw it. They know what our budget is. I mean, we could just take this blurb that's already created. If and they're, just if they're not aware yeah. of it, then, yeah. you know, shame on them. Um, but we'll reiterate it, and then when they come come August, if they're going to vote on it, we're gonna, you know, Jim, I, Kevin, we've all gone up there before. You well, know. it was very effective when the free first selectmen went up there. Yeah, that's going to have to happen. Um, and I think that's the level, but this should be, there should be yep. a communication for your comment, BJ. How do we know for sure? How do we have documentation, basically? Perfect. And it's in the email that you sent, and I saw that John's on there and a couple other folks, but yeah, let's make that the priority of the email this time, not just Agreed. pull it in the... Um, and I think for, from an organizational point of view, I think it should come no, from Kevin. No, I'd be happy to help with writing or whatever, but I don't think it should be anything big, you no, know? Right. Are we concerned sentence. that they might spend some of that those funds? Absolutely. Yeah. Joe, when they were given the gonna. opportunity to uh, approve their own budget, when they were given the opportunity during a pandemic to find everything under the sun, uh, they chose to spend. Uh, they have been over budgeting. Uh, you know, Brian, bring up the charts from, from February when when we had uh, letters sent to us as a board, and at the same time. There was an article that was in process to be published in our town newspaper that I wrote, uh, basically taking the data that they gave us when I asked for it and then just summarizing it in a way by doing some math to show and demonstrate how systemic the budgets have been in terms of surplus, how they most recently have been significant in times of COVID and in times of non-COVID, and it's time to get the rounds around it. And so now we've we've done the right thing and budgeted it accordingly. Seventy-three percent of the voters in Orange supported what we provided this year as a budget. Uh, so we're speaking for them. Uh, and so they have the money, uh, and we expect it to be reimbursed. Yeah, and my last comment on Amity with that is, these years, like Joe, last year, they held back half a million, or, or it was 900000 I forget what the number was, for all these things that, quote, weren't, oh. that were cut from the budget. Now they put they paid for them. They've done that the last few years. It's in the budget, because if it wasn't, how do you have a $2.5 million surplus? Or a three, you know, you could afford it in the next year, just not there. It was the same, same issue we had years ago with Dr. Brady, remember, when Amity got rid of their resource officer and the three towns picked up the tap because we wanted the officer at Amity. He didn't, too bad. Mm -hmm. But then they're like, oh, well, now we have to put 80,000 back in the budget. It's like, that's gonna increase our budget. Well, how? You just had three years of two, pl yeah. two plus million dollars. It's 80 grand, it was, it's crazy. So whatever they need to, if they wanna try to encumber even more out of this surplus, it's already there next yeah, year. Right, right. I don't know where it is yet, but I think all of us are confident it's well, there. It's in medical, it's in pure transportation, especially. It's, it's there, there somewhere. It's there, it's there every year. It's there so, every year. And yeah. Salaries. Okay. Tuition. It's there. <laughs> it's there. Mr. Shanley. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> uh, motion to adjourn. 845. I'll second. Second by Jim. All those in favor? We have no discussion. <laughs> no discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Meeting adjourned at 845. Yeah. Great seeing everybody. Hey. Yeah.